5 a.m. Time to hit the road. I couldn't sleep, so this should be fun. It's like a giant like solar farm. But that looks so cool. I wish I could like stop and like fly the drone from the top, but that's probably like illegal. So we hit the first pit stop of the day, putting gas in. We're at state line right now. It's a uh, nine o'clock and we still have about Halfway to go, three hours and 20 minutes. I'm gonna try and go to this thing I see on the internet a lot. It's like uh, these stacked colorful rocks. I think it's called like Seven Magic Mountains or something like that. If we see it, we're gonna stop by and check that out too. And then we're gonna do the long haul to Zion. So, back out. So, we just showed up to the Seven Magic Mountains, I think is what it's called. We're gonna check it out. It looks pretty cool. It's like some art installation. I'll show you things. Those are so damn cool. They're massive. I'm super far from them. I'm about like 40 yards away from them. Those things are gnarly. I've seen them before driving through the freeway, but I got to actually stop by and check them out this time and I'm pretty dang stoked. They're so damn cool. I'm glad I stopped by. It was a cool experience. I drove past it last time I was going to Vegas and I was like, man, I really want to go out there. <sighs> no time like the present, right? Got off, got to see it, and I'm pretty glad. I'm excited. I'm happy. Got some cool pictures. Now, finish the trip to Zion. That was Vegas. I don't really see the appeal. I don't like to drink. I definitely don't like gambling and wasting my money. I guess that's probably why I don't like coming here very much. The only thing I do like to do out here is just eat. I've tried one Gordon Ramsay restaurant here called Burger and it was fantastic. I think he's got a, two more now. I don't even know if Burger's here anymore. Do you know if Burger's still here? No. So on our trip to Utah, we briefly nick Arizona for a little, for how many miles? Like a mile or a couple miles, huh? That's, yeah. It's like not we, like we hit the corner of Arizona yeah. for a brief second. So this is Arizona, everybody. <laughs> this is Veterans Memorial Highway. This is like right when you get into Arizona and when you get when you finish the highway, you get right into Utah. And uh, it was kind of really cool. It's where you really start to see the scenery change from, you know, California desert to Utah, the Utah style desert. And uh, it was just really cool to see the change in scenery at this point. And finally, after six hours, we reach Utah. So we're at the final stretch and we're about an hour away, less, just less than an hour from where we're going. So we're almost there guys. I can't wait to stretch out my legs. It's crazy how different the mountains look, the mountain ranges look out here, as opposed to California. California, we have like peaks. Um, usually everything peaks. They look like, you know, traditional mountains. But over here, everything's kind of like, like these mass of rock and then they like plateau at the top. And then they kind of like, are all like rainbows in the inside. Like you get your darks, your reds, your pinks, your oranges, your pale tones. It's kind of gorgeous to see these like rainbow mountains everywhere. It's not like what you would think traditionally beautiful like Hawaii or anything like that, but there's definitely beauty to the way it looks. Even though it's desert, it looks really, really pretty.
the views are like actually insane. Holy cow. It looks like Cars Land, but it's real. Met up with the squad, had a brief snack, I'm about to check in and hit that pool and then make the plan for tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. So the very first thing I personally recommend everybody do is just drive through the entire park. It's called the scenic route and you kind of just get a nice just view to take all in driving through the entire park. It's not very long. I think it takes, if I remember correctly, about 30 minutes just to get through it. And uh, like I said, you get a nice, beautiful view of all the area, every angle, and you just get a nice lay of the area before you kind of dive into it. You get to see where all the rest stops are, all the pull-offs and all that stuff. I highly recommend um, doing that first thing. So we're doing the scenic route right now, and it was crazy to see just a lot of the cool plateaus and stuff like that. The scene's been really cool, um, but we're kind of lost. We And we have no reception here or anything like that. We lost complete communication with our entire party. There's like three other cars that we're with. Now we don't know where anybody is because when we're paying for tickets, we all went on different things and they all took different times to let people through. Now we can't get a hold of it, anybody. And we're kind of just aimlessly wandering around. In fact, I was told if we keep going down that road, we're gonna go to the Grand Canyon and Bryce Canyon. Two hour drive and we can get to the Grand Canyon. So we're contemplating if we should do that or try and get a hold of people. So yeah, basically we just didn't get a hold of anybody for the rest of the day. So we kind of just decided to find a stop, pull over and just go exploring for a little bit. For this specific reason, I highly recommend bringing walkie talkies, some kind of two-way radio that, you know, has a long range because that really sucked. It did, it was a huge bummer that we just didn't have contact for the rest of the day with anybody else that we were with, but we made the most of it and we just started going on hikes. We just pulled over and went on a hike and let the little one just do her thing for a mile or two. And uh, it was pretty fun. It ended up being really, really fun. I like seeing her, you know, do her thing in, in different elements. And it was really cool to catch up with my buddy Daniel just talking the whole way. So we just did our first little hike and it kicked my butt, but it was really fun. Well, my ankles are screaming because it switches between like flat plateau rock like this and then boom, it's sand. Then boom, it's pebbles and gravel and then sand. And so it's just uh, wreaking havoc on my ankles because I'm like walking like do, 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 do. But it's been super fun. Little one's getting tired though. Well, there's so many cool formations. I'm definitely out of breath, but it was fun. Lots of fun actually. And uh, my buddy Booker D met up with us. He's from Montana. We're coming from California. He drove 11 hours just to come hang out with us. So I'm glad I got to see him. He just, he moved away from California about a year ago. And then I finally got to see him again. Probably gonna take a little light break and then see what we do from there. Might do another little hike. So we had a wild morning. We showed up at the last minute and then could not find parking. So my parents were just gonna drop us off and then head back and miss the trip. But when we showed up and we told them the story, they were like, oh, that's fine. Just we'll let you guys wait for them. So we were luckily able to wait for them, but they still took 40 minutes to find parking, 40 minutes. So if you guys come to this trip, plan to be here an hour before you're supposed to be here because it literally took 40 minutes to find parking. But now we're on the bus and we're headed to the Narrows right now. So we just made it to the Riverwalk and now we have about a mile hike to uh, the Narrows. So time for action, guys. We're just seeing uh, views of the little river the whole way here and uh, we're really excited to travel to it. 
So the Riverside Walk is just that. It's a mile long walk to the Narrows, literally just following it along the side. It's paved the entire way until you get to the actual Narrows and then it's just water from there. So we got to the first stop. This is the forefront of the Narrows. So from this point on, it's trekking via water. But uh, this view is just insane. Had some trouble. The little one's starting to get antsy and not feeling the hike anymore. So we're gonna see just how far up the narrow we can actually make it. Wish me luck. You got it. That is another one. Oh, that's it, my thumb. You got it. Good job. You did it. You did it, Jamie. Good job. Wow. You did it. So we just had to get to a part where the water gets to about just by our belly buttons and I had to put her on my shoulders and luckily we just got past it so continuing to move forward this is so cool though without a doubt this is the absolute coolest thing I've ever experienced aside from my trip to Hawaii of course but this was just phenomenal. Not an outdoors person. I didn't think I was going to enjoy this trip, but I wanted, you know, to do something nice for my family. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Everything about this, the waterfalls, walking through the water, seeing all the cliffs, it was just an experience I'd never had before, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. This was phenomenal. I'm glad I got to experience this with my little family. So we hit this cool spot where it starts to tunnel in like, you know, what the Narrows is famous for. Almost fell. I just can't stress enough how cool this is. This looks, looks amazing. I never thought I'd be one to be into nature and stuff like that, but it's got a lot to offer. I think I might do this. I might have this be a regular thing where I just go out and explore the world. Cause this is dope. I'm not even tired at all. Like I'm just way too excited. I'm running on adrenaline. So it's getting dark and uh, we were here for four hours, trekking as far as we could go, especially with a little one. And it's time to go eat. But it was really fun. I'm surprised it lasted as long as I did. It wasn't very hard at all. Just gotta take your time with it and don't rush anything.